All right, so um, what you saw is the, the uh, right way of doing things, so using the SDK and then deploying there and configuring devices. But sometimes it's kind of get useful to get to the command line, especially when you take uh, existing code set and, and start porting it and start making the changes to the spec file and, and stuff like that. And uh, in, in general, when you start debugging your things, uh, some of these uh, standard Linux tools are useful. So, so I, I thought I'd share you with a couple of tips and tricks to, to work with the command line. So I have my uh, SDK installed. I have my virtual machines uh, running here. But what I do is that uh, uh, I use this uh, application called uh, Sukmin. To, to have this uh, Unix-like command line on the on the Windows because the, the DOS the DOS is, is, is not uh, good enough. I don't like it. So what I do is let's go, let's go. Could you please change the font size? Just I'm make... not sure. <laughs> <laughs> uh, if it is possible, please do it. Uh... Right. Yep. Cool. Thank you. All right. Ah. So, uh, so what I do now is that I will take a SSH connection to the build engine itself because it is a virtual machine. And SSH is actually the method that the, the Qt creator is talking to the, to the build engine. And uh, it is running on port 2222. And, and this here means that uh, it uses the key that is in defined in, in this file. So it is a public key based authentication. And uh, this will log in as user mer SDK. And, and this, of course, local host is, is this local machine, so we are not taking a, making a remote connection. And if it's, everything is right, yes, now, now I'm in, so, so now I'm on the, on the command line of the emulator. <coughs> so, uh, what then? Uh, so, this is the, the home of the MER SDK user, and the important part is this share. So that is the shared folder between the host operating system, so the Windows, and, and then the, the client, so the build engine itself. So if I go to, to share, I will see something like uh, my Windows files here. Scale it. So this is, you know, standard Windows stuff that I have in my home work folder. Uh, I have a folder called projects where I have my, my programming stuff and uh, let's do um, a standard workflow so pull something and try to build it so here's a repository in github and I'm just going to clone it here into the build engine Alright, so the kit was pre-installed in the emulator, uh, the build engine tools, so I get it. Let's go to the directory. Uh, within the build engine we have a couple of targets. So if I look at the Scratchbox init script, it will list me the targets that I have. So this uh, is of course the ARM target, so that's the environment for building for ARM. And as this, this target then uh, is the target to build for the uh, emulator or tablet, so the x86 architecture. And uh, to run stuff in that target, I just use the Scratchbox tool and then define the target. So let's try to use this uh, build it for ARM. Uh, but let's see the, the folder first. So this is a pretty standard simple package that I, that I have here. Here it is uh, shuffle.pro is the project file. There's packaging already. Uh, so it is a uh, YAML based packaging. So if I want to manually generate the spec file, then it would be just 
uh, Specify and And now it generated the spec file out of the YAML. Of course, the, the, spec, the YAML file is optional, so you can just have the spec file if you like. Um, then, if I want to manually compile it, I can just run a QMake here. And now the QMake is complaining that this dependency, libmedia art development package, is not found. So I can install it, uh, and this time I'm pushing this dash r to make it that this time this command is executed that with root privileges, and and Chipper is the package management used in the emulator. So let's install. And the devil package. Ah, oh, no, that no, it's just something. I exhibit <laughs> the whole SSH connection, so let's see what I am. And so it installs the, the devel package to the development environment or to the, the, to the target environment. So let's try to build it again. Uh, so QMake goes through. What about the actual make command? So it built it. Uh, the other option you can try here is to use the, the, the build script that called mp2. So this is uh, the script that will do also the RPM packaging as well. So again, define the target for the arm and, uh, and the command for building the package would be build. And like it says, it now brought the RPM and it is under the directory RPMs. Uh, so I can just use SCP to copy that to the device. So now it's copied to, to the device here via SCP, uh, so I can just uh, go to that device with SSH. Okay, this is again a bit small. Or actually, I can use the built virtual machine to go forward. So let's go from here. So the, the, the software package I just made, which doesn't follow the naming convention since it's just shuffle and not hard of shuffle. Uh, so 
I'll install it and for that I'll need uh, root privileges for the device we have this uh, script called devil soup which gives the privileges and uh, with RPM I can install it and if all is nice I can now launch it here And so I have it running from the command line for the, for the device. Uh, of course, the whole point of having the command line is to be able to use the, the, the command line tools like uh, GDP for debugging. Uh, I don't think it's here by default. No, it's not. So again, I can install it. Uh, the package management is a is, uh, the tool that is used is, is pkcon, so pkcon install gdp, the naming is right, so it will install it with the dependencies, ah, I need to again to be the root. The other practical tip is that uh, when you're developing, it's a good idea to have a, a screen lock set to a, you know, keep display on while charging, so under the display settings, because then uh, the display stays on, and when the display stays on, the device doesn't go to the sleep mode, and everything stays nice and responsive to the time that you are using the device. So now I have a GDP on device. It's just standard GDP as in your uh, desktop Linux. stuff it should be available in the repository so uh, there's uh, there's S trace and there's uh, Volkerin uh, and other tools that are useful for, for um, debugging on device uh, for uh, following what's up in your, your system, the one tool that logs the event ends is, is journal and to see what's happening, so just your journal control, let's have the all and let's continue the follow. So you, you, when I start to use the device I'm gonna see a lot of stuff here, it's slow. But anyway, this, this provides the system log. Whatever is happening on it. Events and debug output from the journal. We, we use the uh, free desktop standards, so the desktop file comes from the free desktop org standards and similarly the URL handling is, uh, or the protocol handling system wide is, is based on that too. So uh, the utility for, for invoke it from the command line is xdg open, so if I have a, let's say, a picture Just XTG open.
and it gets the default handling for picture type of uh, things or similarly if I want to have a mail to link well I don't have I guess email accounts configured so maybe the mail to it's not the best one but if standard HTTP then that would be right directed to, to the browser uh, so that's handy little utility of course we have top available so you see what's happening on your, your device uh, and uh, what else the file system looks quite normal the configuration would go to Dconf is one of the which is used to, to for configuration store the configuration values of the device. So if you want to see what's happening, then just listing. So I can even dump the whole list. Which it's a hierarchy of, of keys in value pairs. So there's all sorts of things. So tweaking this is not recommended because it's easy to get your device on, on, on a, a very weird state. But anyway, uh, one of these kind of nice, nice handy things that we have. All right, but uh, that's pretty much what I wanted to show. That we have a command line. It's fairly close to normal Linux command line and normal Linux stuff works and can be utilized in debugging and porting your applications on the platform. Alright. Uh, on the final note, these are like the feedback channels that we have. So this was already discussed that the together.jola.com is really valuable. I think that's more like a common user point of view and maybe for the improvement ideas and bugs. Uh, developer discussion, best answers you get from the from the mailing list and on the IRC and uh, for you know actually contributing to the open source side then the, the IRC channels are best and uh, as, as a company we are present in all sorts of social media I didn't even list those here so there's uh, Twitter, Facebook, uh, contact I mean like 10 different, 10, 10 different social media channels, so it's all in there. Okay.